Well, look, God bless y'all on Facebook Live. This is Apostle Ivory Hopkins. Amen. We are doing some mentoring class today in our, our service that we have here at this conference. Amen. Called Delivered by the Power of the Blood. It's the Power of the Blood Conference. And I would like to read for you out of the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, and Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21. And I want to say to you, there is nothing too hard for God. I came in this morning to kind of make this little reach out to you to tell everybody this, that if you are coming for deliverance, no matter what the demons are doing, no matter how hell is raging, I want to tell you that the name of Jesus is above every name and his blood still works. The cross has power and we as believers are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Philippians 2 9 reads like this, wherefore God also have highly exalted him, Jesus, and given him a name which is above every name. And Ephesians 1 21, far above all principalities and powers, might, thrones, and dominions. So at the name of Jesus, every single knee shall bow and everyone shall confess. Often I get deliverance cases that are very difficult, and it does take time sometimes when you're warfaring, but I want to tell you it's the attitude that makes the difference. And you must realize that when the enemy takes and plays a game with you, the other day I had a call, it was really interesting. The, the sister was, and she don't mind me sharing this. Matter of fact, we made a tape, and we're going to end up putting it up. But she called me, she said to me, the demons are telling me that if I try to get deliverance, they're going to attack me. They're telling me that they're, Real strong deliverance, and nobody has found out their code or their name. And I said to her, sis, I said, I want to tell you something. I said, I have, in all the years I've been in deliverance, I've seen these demons play this game. They're going to kill you. I've been told by demons they're going to kill me for 30, 40 years. I'm still here kicking. You know when I'm going to die? When Jesus says, Ivory, come home. And I'm going to go like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. And that the state the world is in right now, I wouldn't mind it. But <laughs> that's my little joke and fact. But I went to tell you, as we and her, me and her were talking, I began to explain to her, I said, listen to me. I said, as long as you listen to those demons telling you that they have so much power, that the root workers are so powerful, that the conjurement, that the obia is so powerful, let me tell you what you're actually got to be careful of. You got to be careful of putting more faith in the works of the demons than in the power of God. It's very easy to do. A lot of people don't understand that if a demon can convince you that he is unmovable, such a generational curse and nobody can break it, so powerful you won't get free, I maintain to tell you that is a faith concept that has been, that has been put in your mind. And that will be enough faith for demons to hold their ground. I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. I'm saying to you, just as we in the word of God say that we confess the word of God, we are who Christ says that we are. We have what God says that we have. Amen. We are the righteousness of God created in Christ Jesus. We have power and authority. We are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. Well, those confessions, if you believe them, you will operate in that. If demons can convince you to take the faith you have in God and put just enough of them having a little bit of, you got to do this or I ain't going to go. They will use that and they will stay in an individual. You have to come with the come hell or high water. My God is greater than any devil. The, uh, my God is, a, is, a, is an awesome God. He reigns and I will not. I will not lay down for you demons. I will not believe that you got more power than God. And guess what? I wouldn't care if 50, you know what? I wouldn't care if 15 witches were standing outside our church door and another 11 was, and another 11 of them were standing in the back room back there. We will take them out. In Jesus' name, that's straightly, and I'm not joking. When I said take about, you said, brother, are you talking about killing them? Please, I ain't got to kill them. I'm talking about dethrone them. Why? Because God is greater. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So when you're coming for freedom, when you're coming for liberty, when you're coming to be mentored by me, you, you have to have what I call stubborn faith and authority. Woman of God, I am one stubborn man. 
I am so stubborn that I believe that the, that the strongholds even in my life. Listen, I am beating the dream out of, out of the attack on my way, fighting it. Is, has it been easy? No. Is that all I do every day? No. I praise every day. I worship every day. I fight devils every day. I confess the words every day. But I'm going to beat this beast. You know why? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If you don't have that attitude, you lost the battle already. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? I cannot. Listen. Sometimes you will meet a person that it will seem like the name of Jesus doesn't work. The blood of Jesus doesn't work. The word of God doesn't work. The power of the cross doesn't work. I have found, and this is not always the case, a couple of things are operating. They're dealing with, dealing with a stronghold that they, their faith has to be built up to stay in the battle. And you have to encourage them to stay in the battle. Got that? Sometimes they're stronger because the demons have convinced the person that they are more powerful than God. You know, I, listen, I don't care whether root workers listen to me. Matter of fact, I hope you are so you'll get saved. I don't care whether conjure man or, and I don't care what nation or country you come from. Because you see, I'm from another planet. See, the planet I'm from is called, a, they call it said the heavenly places. The planet that I'm from is far above all principalities and powers. The planet that I come from is the planet where God is sitting on the throne. The heavenly host is on our side. And greater is he that's on our side than he is even on the enemy's side. That's the attitude I go to war with. Another way that demons are defeating people is they are convincing them that every incident in your life, they're in charge of it. If you write a bad check and you don't have enough money in the account, the demons then bind your finance. No, it's not. You didn't calculate. You have to be, you have, got, sounds dumb. Sounds dumb, but you haven't dealt with some of the situations I've dealt with. You cannot, those who attribute every attack in their life to a demon will become more deceived and they will find us, they will find themselves confused. Why? Because you're trying to cast out and pull down what isn't a devil. And, and, and this is the reason, and, and you say, well, Brother Ivory, what is the remedy for that? Glad you asked. You guys ask great questions on Facebook Live. Y'all are awesome. What is the remedy for it? You have to ask God, what is the source of what's happening to you? Can we talk? Yeah. Is it, are you tempted by your own life? Somebody say tempted. Yeah. Now, a temptation, you are not going to cast out a temptation. And guess what you're tempted by? Your own desires. Now, the Greek word for it is lust. But, but we English people, immediately when we hear the word lust, the first thing we think of is sex, because that's where we, we've been geared that way. But the actual Greek word said that when that, not a man say when he is tempted, he's tempted of God, but, he, but you're tempted when you're drawn and enticed of your own lust. Those own words, that means the things you desire. When Satan came after Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, he came after Jesus. It saved that battery. I'm on Facebook Live. I got it. Save that battery. Yeah, save that battery. When Satan came after, when Jesus in the wilderness was tempted by Satan, guess what Satan tempted Jesus with? His own desire. Got that? Satan would have never said to Jesus, he would have never said, you see all these kingdoms? If you bow down and serve me, I'll give them to you. Jesus' passion, desire, I hate to use the term lust, because once again, we're English. Immediately you say, oh, you're saying Jesus had lust. Jesus had desires. Are you following me? So he was tempted and enticed by his own desires. If it was not a desire of Jesus, it would have not been a temptation. The very definition of temptation is to appeal to one with something that they desire, then offer them a price if they submit. Did anybody hear that? That's good. That's good stuff. Did you get that? So suppose I call a temptation a demon. One time a young man came to me and he said to me, Apostle, Pastor, I have this tremendous demon of lust. I said, really? I said, what do you do? He said, well, 
well, I'm, 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 I'm tempted with women. I said, okay. And I said, and what do you do? He said, well, I get tempted to look at them. I said, and what do you do? He said, well, the Bible tells me don't even look at a woman like that. Lust of I've committed adultery already in my heart. I said, okay. I said, then what do you do? He said, I turn my eyes. I don't yield to it. I said, really? And, and I said to him, I said, so what do you want me to do? He said, but that's a demon. I said, no, that's your human part. When it is a demon, believe you me, it'll be a great more rustling than that. When it is a demon and what have you, it won't be, oh, I thought to look at her or him. It'll be, I not only thought to look, I seem like I can't help the pursue. Remember, demons drive, lust, temptation pulls. Demons drive. They drive you towards a thing. That, and you follow me what I'm saying? And so you need to find out when you're dealing with something, and rather than give it all just demons, you have to determine rather your the rules of engagement. Engagement. Am I dealing with my own desires? Is the person dealing with that? Another one you have to understand is, am I dealing with the timing of God in my life? Let me tell you what I mean. I'll use my own self as an example. That way you won't get mad with me. Okay? I'm nasty to Evelyn. I, I wake up, although I can preach, oh, I'm anointed, I can prophesy. But at home, I treat her rude, bad, and indifferent. Got that? Now, I come here to a conference. Thurman, elders, I want y'all to pray for me. Sister Rosa, would you pray for a break in my finances? Because it seems like I have a, there's a stronghold in my finances. You want to dictate what you want addressed but fail to realize I need to also uh, be very sensitive to what God is dealing with. Then all of a sudden, Thurman looks at me, or one of them uh, soldiers look at me and go, uh, brother, um, I know I'm going to pray for your finances, but there's some things with your attitude and your heart. Can we? Can we? Well, I praise God. I, I, well, I, I told you, my finances, I done told you what I came for prayer for. Listen to see what God is doing. I, I'm, I'm losing three people. I know what you want, but let's find out what God is doing. I never blame myself, and I'm going to tell you work, deliverance work is this. Never blame yourself for what God is not addressing, and because you, you, you can only address what God anoints. See, I'm, I lost two more people. You actually, listen, I thank God, Apostle Wallace, I thank God that before I learned about demons, I learned about the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. I learned how to be led by the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit is and how God operates. There's a whole lot of jokers coming in deliverance. You are clueless on how the Holy Spirit moves. And it is, and, and that's the reason why your work in deliverance has to be mechanical. You have to be able to discern through the Holy Spirit can anybody say the Holy Spirit has to lead? Now, if you have trouble with that, you don't have a demon. You're just ignorant. And I mean it in its, in its real sense. That is ignorance. It is pure ignorance to think that you're going to go into the things of God without God being in charge. Are you hearing me? So you have to, when you're working and dealing with coming for deliverance, remember, there's nothing too hard for God. You must be open to what the Holy Spirit is dealing with. Got that? And you definitely cannot have the doggone witches and warlocks and sorcerers sounding like they're more powerful than God. But brother, I, I say, listen, let me help you. I've seen demons walk through walls. I have seen apparitions. I've seen tables levitate. I was in Rehoboth Beach in a house what was straight up warlocks used to own it. And when we went there, the demons were burning crosses on the pillow and still God moved. Elder Isler, I think, was with me when we, I took a couple of my elders with us and we're not paying, but was off the hook. We sat in that gear to pray and all of a sudden the table went rum, 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 and started easing up. I said, put it down in Jesus' name. Slam! I did not get scared. Now, Brother Harvey, weren't you scared something was going to go home with you? It's, yes, it did. It went home with me. And I ain't talking about a three-course meal. It went home with me, the Holy Ghost. It went over there with me, the Holy Ghost. It went to bed with me, the Holy Ghost. Greater is he that's within you than he that's in the world. I'm going to tell every single one of y'all looking at me here 
and listening at me in this audience, you have a spirit. I see it in some of y'all. Yeah, I see the spirit saying you call the Holy Ghost. You have to understand. The Holy Ghost in your spirit, man, is what heals sickness, what breaks disease, what breaks yoke. Even the strongholds and struggles that we have, the Holy Spirit within empowers us. You have to think like this. You got to, or no one can deliver you. Or no one will be able to set that area free. Well, look, look Facebook Live, listen, just taking a couple of minutes just before the conference. What we're going to do is do some more mentoring and teaching. But I had to put that up and what have you because I wanted the people to understand is that you have to have a certain mindset to come for freedom. You have to have a certain mindset to come for Do not, listen, when, I, when you come before God for anything, Lord God, I came for what you want to do. It's called surrender. Can I, how many of y'all felt the spirit? I saw how strong the spirit of God was in there last night. Do you know what my attitude was last night? I really didn't care what the Holy Spirit wanted to do as long as it was him doing it. I had to stand still. Even when apostle was preaching, she was feeling the spirit just like I was. We're trying to see which way God, we weren't trying to figure who, who had the most anointing. Because I maintain to tell you, the strongest one in the house with the most powerful anointing is the one that the anointing is on with the assignment. Nothing more, nothing less. I would care was a five-year-old child. See, just before we get all cocky and arrogant about how powerful we are in anything, you have to understand you're no more powerful than God using you. If God is not on it, all you is is a person with a bunch of information. All these little books I write, wrote, God bless them, means nothing if the anointing and the spirit of God is not saying this is what I'm dealing with. Surrender. That was another thing I learned. I learned in the beginning of my salvation over 40 some years ago is how to surrender first to the word. Not goosebumps. Not hair standing on my arm. Not feeling a cool breeze in the back of my neck. Dog gone that. I can't believe he said that. Yeah. Yeah. Forget feelings only. Learn word. Joy the feeling later. But learn word first. Because demons are capable of making you feel goosebumps. Job chapter 4, straight up. The guy in Job chapter 4 never heard from God. But he had goosebumps, hair standing up. Spirit passing before his face, a voice speaking to him and, and trying to tell him, he even spoke to him and told him God had no trust in man. And everybody who read the book of Job knows God hadn't talked to him at all. But it was some of the same manifestations that many of us Pentecostals use as barometers how to serve God. God never created feelings to be the barometer to serve him. Thy word, O Lord, is forever settled in heaven. That's why. If I, if I don't feel nothing and command the devil to go, I'm still going to stand. I got the authority. If I don't feel a bridge, you just say, well, brother, did you feel that shaking in your body? The devil still got to go. Can anybody give God a great big hand praise? <laughs> and I fear something. I fear things. God, I fear disobedience. I fear living immoral. I, I feel, I fear uh, uh, getting in the wrong type of teaching or company and have myself not live the word. I fear how I treat my wife. Because old girlfriends, the Bible says about girlfriend, you know what the Bible said about my wife? It said, husband, love your wife that your prayers be not hindered. I can't hear you. It's got quiet. Because I know we're just an independent, anointing little thing and what have you. I have the name. I have the notoriety. I'm known all over the world, but that woman sitting back there has the power just to close her mouth if I treat her wrong and treat her any kind of way, and God will deal with me for her. Are you understanding me? See, I, I, I would like to tell you that you cannot, you, uh, to you couples in here, you can't afford to treat each other any kind of way and think it's okay. You can't afford it. Has anybody ever told you that yet? You can't, it, the easiest one to be rude to is Evelyn 
because I'm relaxed all up in my pajamas, sitting back with my cup of flowers, t-shirt, pajamas on. I can, I can snap at her in a minute. She's going to forgive me anyhow. Got that? That's exactly where many of our strongholds is. You want God to use you. You want liberty, but you fail in the rules of engagement. And the last one I'd like to hit, thank you, is Evelyn's deliverance is not my dictation. And it got quieter. I pray for her freedom. I pray for her deliverance. But it's not my place to dictate her deliverance. Well, I tell you this truth, Brother Rosa, she needs this, she needs that, she needs the other thing. Sometimes when I hear that, I'm like, there's people, well, what do you need? In case you don't get this, just in case somebody on Facebook doesn't get this, Hebrews 12, 1, I believe it says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. First, everyone in one says, not only ours, but yours as well. Jesus is the author and finisher of my wife's faith, my children's faith. There comes a time with, my, with those, including church folk, all of you, tell y'all right now, I am not the author and finisher of your faith. There are some things that God has to do. Hey, Evelyn, you remember years ago, was something I was doing, I forget what it was. And, and, and Evelyn would tell me, because I was grown enough to do it. It wasn't sin, but, but you know, just being, just being obstinate. And Evelyn, Evelyn kept saying, I know what it was. Hey, bro, I'm going to share this with you. This is a good one. This is a good one. Then I'm going to get on Facebook Live. And I'm, I need you to share something with me, Tommy, okay? I'll pass the time. Anyway, uh, it, was, it, was, it was the way I was speeding. And when she would say something to me, you need to slow down. I said, I'm driving. I got the wheel on them. You know, how, you know how we do. Come on. Somebody's been there. So anyway, the more she would, tell, she would say something about it and what have you, and, you know, after a few tickets, the wisdom still didn't kick in. Y'all hear me? So, <laughs> so anyway, she was trying to talk to me about it. I said, look, I, woman, you ain't going to, woman, you I don't want to be hearing all of that and what have you. I got this. I went turns around and went to God. She said, Lord, I am trying to talk to this man, and he won't listen. She said, God, you speak to him. And, honey, I was, I was, I was driving. I was getting it one day. And all of a sudden, a grace came to my mind and said, slow it down. And it was like, it was like a change took place. It wasn't control. It was surrender. It was, surrender. listen, sometimes, and it happens in human nature. You ever have tell someone something, somebody close to you, something over and over that somebody over there says one time and they come home, honey. I got a revelation. <laughs> Anybody ever had that? Sometimes there are, there are, with our mates and with people that are close to us or with people in our surroundings, we can't hear their voice. And listen, if she went all the time, I'm not going to take that. I'm just not the one. I'm not one of them guys like that. You know, you're not going to into submitting to anything. Remember, I fight principalities that are older than you. So when you come, you better come with the angel of days. <laughs> and when she prayed to her God and her father, it, it broke it. And I came home, I said, Ev, I said, you know what? She said, what? I said, Ev, I said, I started, I was, I was kicking the other day going down the road, man. I said, and I felt really strongly convicted. She said, mm-hmm, and smiled. And I said, girl, it was brilliant. I said, I said you know what? I'm going to quit doing that mess. And she looked at me and said, mm-hmm. And I said, you've been praying on me, haven't you? She looked at me and just started smiling and just smiled because she knew right well that the only way to get to me from that yoke was to put God on it. Now, why did I say all that? Why did I share all of this? Some things we see even in other people's lives or even in our own my, my mate's life, put God on it. You can't do it. Look at your neighbor and say, put God on it. If God cannot be trusted, with, if the one who manufactured it can't fix it or work with it, then you know you don't have a chance. Well, God bless you. Look, Facebook Live, I'll see you later. Tell you guys like I used to do. I'll catch you all again in another teaching tape. We got a class to do here. Bye-bye. Let's give God a great big hand, praise.
Murray, could you 